Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthification Chronicles, and in this video we're going to talk about scheming to give Democrats control of the Senate. Why is the Senate important? Because it controls the nominations of the justices of the Supreme Court, which we just saw with Kavanaugh. Why was it such a battle? Because now the court is five to four, and that causes them a lot of grief because their liberal justices are going to be outruled by the conservatives when it comes to some of the things that they want to impose upon the American people. This has concerned me for a while now because really it meant that our entire country depended on five people and whatever five people said went and that's why it was extremely concerning to me to think that if Hillary got in we could be in deep do for a very long time because the Supreme Court was moving more towards an activist role than an interpretation role which was scary but if you know anything about the Supreme Court we do have Ginsburg who is 85 and very likely before the end of Trump's second term she will have to be replaced so that's another one that we'd get that would make it six to three and then if Breyer happens to step down now he's 80 right now but by the time Trump's done he could be 86 getting up there so it's very possible depending on his health how it goes whether he will step down or not Trump might get that as well and then Justice Thomas is 70 so he would be 76 which isn't that old and he might not retire because of his age but because he is getting up there and in a political sense if he would step down that would give Trump a chance to nominate yet another conservative and that would make it seven to two which would make the Supreme Court conservative for many years because the ones that Trump's putting in are in their 50s and they could be there for 20 30 years so for 20 30 years it would ensure a conservative Supreme Court with no chance for the liberal agenda to be pushed through so that's a very distinct possibility and they know it that's why they are desperate to keep control of the Senate they also are desperate to keep control of the House, by the way, because the House controls a lot of this investigation that's going on as well. Plus, the Senate investigation's going on because you know what Grassley has been doing. He's been doing a lot of investigations that we haven't known about because the information is there, people just don't access it. But he's been doing a lot for us too. So the Democrats are desperate to get control of the Senate again. They really just can't stand it that they're not. This whole thing has to do with Soros. Now, it also has to do with this organization here. I'm going to call them the double P because my videos tend to get demonetized when I talk about the A word here. Okay, so I'm going to stick away from saying the A word and the double P so that they have no reason to do that to me because they don't show it as much, it doesn't get out there and so people don't see it as much and I want to make sure people see this video because this is really important. Okay, anyway, the double P is joining Soros and they are doing it in a way that has been planned for several months here. This article is dated May 14th of this year and look what it has to say. Left-wing billionaire George Soros is putting his money behind a new campaign to return the United States Senate to Democratic control, and the double P is reporting for duty. The Win Justice campaign, oh, what a misnomer there. Ooh, his definition of justice is not what mine is. Is comprised of the double P votes, the Center for Community Change, Color of Change PAC, and Services Employees International Union, the Washington Free Beacon reports it plans to focus its efforts on women, youth, and racial minorities who don't normally vote in every election in Florida, Michigan, and Nevada. And then this is statistics. Oh. The initiative plans to outperform past similar efforts by, look how they're going to do it, authentically engaging these voters early and often through community leaders. It said in a statement to USA Today, as opposed to efforts that engage too close to Election Day and don't build real relationships. Do you really think they're building real relationships with these people? I think they're pretending to, but then the minute that they lose on Tuesday night from the midterms, they're going to drop these people like hot potatoes. You just watch. Win Justice, whose only known funder so far is who? Soros 
happens to reach 2.5 million voters through digital organizing, text campaigns, and door-to-door -door canvassing. Soros donated $3 million to the PAC in March. The PAC ultimately hopes to spend $30 million in the midterms. The $3 million from Soros is the only income of any kind on file with the Federal Election Commission, and when paired with a single $15 operations fee, leaves Win Justice with more than $2.9 million cash on hand as of April 1st. The Center for Community Change lists Deepak Bhargava as its executive director and Gara Lamanche as an advisory board member, both of whom have also been part of Soros' Open Society Foundation. We'll find out more about that in a minute. Over the years, Soros has spent tremendous amounts of money to promote the A-word in the United States and around the globe. According to the Media Research Center, he has donated more than $21 million to the Double P since 2000 and gave last year's so-called Women's March on Washington almost $90 million via donations to more than 100 partnered organizations such as NARAL and National A Federation. Through his network of organizations, Soros lobbies for a euthanasia and population control, as well as same-sex marriage. I got to tell you, the population control is the reason behind this. It fits in with Agenda 21. If you're not familiar with Agenda 21, they basically want to have a global government, but they want to reduce the population to a manageable amount, and that's about 500 million people. Now, if you know, the world has over 7 billion people. And yeah, they want to reduce the population down to 500 million. Think about that and what that would entail. Is there any wonder that there's a push for euthanasia and the A word? And same-sex marriage, because of course, if you don't have a man and woman, then they have to go extra route to have any children. And so the likelihood that they will have children is very small transgenderism kids are not going to know what gender they are so they're never going to get married and have children like they normally should and a wide variety of other left-wing causes he has even given money to sway the a battles in foreign countries such as ireland's upcoming referendum despite laws prohibiting domestic groups from accepting foreign funds now i don't know how this guy gets around it but he keeps doing that in lots of countries. The Double P has spent aggressively on behalf of the Democratic Party as well. The Double P Action Fund, PPAF, spent more than 30 million in support of Democratic candidates in 2016. This year, the group says it will spend 20 million, the largest amount it has ever spent on midterm elections to elect pro A word candidates in Arizona, Florida, Michigan, Minnesota, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Soros donates to the organization. The organization donates to the Democratic Party. But that's not all. Now, just in case you don't know who George Soros is, he has this organization called the Open Society Foundations, which we're going to find out about in just a minute. He was worth a lot more money than he's worth now, but there's a reason for that. As of February 2018, he had a net worth of $8 billion after donating $18 billion to this organization. Now, why did he do that? Because... He knows that his time is short. Trump put out the executive order that can take money from people involved in child sex trafficking and can seize their assets. Well, in order to avoid that, he put his money into this nonprofit organization called the Open Society Foundation. There's a lot more. You could do a whole video on this guy. He really has done a lot of disservice to us. He has promoted just about every left-wing cause you can imagine he has been behind. And right after Trump was elected, there's some information that indicates he was funding riots on both sides. Riots for Trump and against Trump. He just likes to cause problems because when there are problems, he gets to make money off of it. It's like when the deep state causes a war. When they cause a war, they make money off of both sides. So that's what he wants to do. He makes money no matter what happens. He's been fueling like Antifa and Black Lives Matter and a lot of these organizations that are causing riots. His money has been behind. A lot of people think that right now a good portion of the money that's funding this caravan is coming from him. 
let's look at what Q has to say today. Now, even if you are not a Q follower, please stick with me on this. You don't have to believe Q is military or anything because I'm going to show you the documentation that goes with what he's saying. So what he's saying is accurate here. The D-Party Con, when you can't raise money organically through party or individual donations from your voter base, you steal it from the American taxpayer and give it back to yourself in the form of campaign contributions. Example one, the double P, now he gives this link right here, which is an interesting link that I'd like to explore more. They have this 65 page document. Basically, it says in the three year period we examined, federal agencies obligated about 27 billion in funding to organizations that provide preventative, reproductive, and diagnostic health care services in the United States or abroad. These include federally qualified health centers, International Double P Federation, Marie Stopes International, and that basically we help women to have children by choice, not chance. Guess what they are? We have averted 825,000 unintended pregnancies among adolescents. Yeah, they've done the A word. That's what they mean. They talks about, oh, these poor children, these poor adolescent girls. They don't have any power. They can't fulfill their potential. And then if you look down here, they did a No More Fairy Tales graphic novel. And they're saying they are refusing to wait for permission. In other words, anybody that tells them, wait until you're married to have sex, they're not waiting for that anymore. How awful that somebody should actually say that. But think of all the problems we could avoid if people would actually adhere to that. You really would have a lot less problems in our world. You would have no venereal disease. You would have so many less women's health problems if they would just do that. And children that are being born out of wedlock, there'd be so much difference if that were followed. Now, I'm not a Puritan, I understand. Not everybody adheres to the Christian values that I do, and I understand that, but it just seems like a normal, natural choice to me because it eliminates a lot of issues if you do follow that. It's just the way they worded it. They are refusing to wait for permission and are fighting for a world in which everyone has the chance to be the hero of their own tale. It's a hero to kill your own child? I don't get that. I really don't. So I'm not sure how an A word could do that for you, but that's what they're saying. That's this organization, Marie Stopes International. Mm -hmm. Charming, charming. But that's what this was. And then the Double P Federation of America. And most of the funding came from two agencies, the Department of Health and Human Services, about $20 billion, and the U.S. Agency for International Development, about $76 million. Now, back to the Q post. So he says to look at that, and he says $1.5 billion provided in taxpayer funding over a three-year period. Case 1, Double P spent $30 million disclosed, real estimates close to $65 million, in taxpayer subsidies to influence the outcome of the 2018 midterm elections. Conclusion, should it be legal for a taxpayer, D plus R plus I, funded organization to donate massive amounts of money to the D party in an effort to sway an election? See, what they're doing is they get the money from the federal government, then they turn right around and give that money to Democrats. This is how it works. I noticed this a long time ago with the teachers unions. The main teachers unions are composed of about 50-50 Democrats and Republicans, but 95% of all the monies they give for activists go towards Democrats. Teachers unions are not representing the teachers as a whole. All it's doing is channeling money to Democrats. That's what it's doing. And it's not just teachers unions. It's a lot of these organizations. This is how the Democrats were doing it. They have had slush funds. They have had ways of doing this for years. This is how they've been funding their campaigns. They don't get money from their grassroots people. They get money from us, the taxpayers. We are funding the Democrat Party. That should tick off all of us. 
anyway that's what Q is talking about and then he says here your hard-earned tax dollars at work this is why we have to vote this is why we have to vote red we have to make sure that these people never get in power again because they're stealing us blind they're taking money from us so one of my viewers blonde Betty Boop I want to say thanks to you for this gave me the tip of this video you really need to see this video again this is how they're laundering money they're taking the money from these organizations these nonprofits and they're funneling taxpayer dollars into them and then those organizations donate to the Democrats and that's how they're laundering money this video tells you a little bit more of Soros's part in this this was a part of a plan to take over the United States so if you watch this video she will take you to some documents I'll show you what those are I'm not gonna go through the material that she does because it would take a long time and Trump's starting to wear me out because of all these rallies so I wanna get in and watch him this is the report that she refers to and this is the Open Society. Remember I told you Soros' organization that he donated a big bunch of money to so it couldn't be taken from him. When Trump's executive order starts sorting out the people that are involved in human trafficking or the transnational criminal organizations, which I have a video on, by the way, Dismantling the Global Mafia. You need to go see that. Anyway, with this, you can look at this document. I couldn't really blow it up very well because of the constraints and I don't have a scribed account so I can't like download it without that and all I can do is read it this is a document it's kind of like that thing from media matters that I did this was never supposed to be public and it was only supposed to be within his organization but you can see here this is his idea of what the White House should look like yeah that's what Soros wants to make the White House look like kind of looks like a shrine to me Here's the table of contents. Number one, the problem with U.S. elections. Well, I can tell you what the problem with U.S. elections is. They can't control all of us. Some of us are awake, and we are not going to let them control our minds, and we are going to stand up for what's right. Plus, we have a military that is an honest-to-goodness military that believes in our Constitution and believes in their oath to defend and protect our Constitution and our country so they can't bypass that they've been trying but they haven't been able to do it and they're not going to because too many of us are awake now but that's the problem with the US elections marketing a visual crisis that basically is their use of the media against us now a few years ago back in 2015 before any of this Q stuff happened I wrote some articles on my blog which has kind of languished so there's not a lot of new stuff on there but there's some old articles you might find interesting and I did a few of them on misandry which is the hatred of men you know it's like misogyny is hating women well misandry is hating men watching TV I started to realize in sitcoms and commercials there is just huge amounts of misandry going on and when I talked to some male friends of mine and I told them that I was observing this they said oh well that's okay we men have broad shoulders and I had two of them tell me exactly the same thing and that's great and I love that about men that you have broad shoulders I love that about Trump that he's got broad shoulders because that's what we needed in this position but we really need men to start speaking up about this my article down here on perceptions on bullying really a good article for you to see the difference between how the genders perceive bullying the bullying that's going on in these commercials and sitcoms that's putting men down in a really horrible way sometimes making them look stupid look like they're slobs they're oafs I mean really think about it you have a yo play commercial where the guy opens a refrigerator and all it has is little containers of yo play and his wife's on the phone talking about how she likes the banana cream pie or this or that and he's looking for the pie really how stupid do you think men are they're not dumb they could understand that but men are always portrayed as slobs animals a lot of times whenever you have a clothing commercial it's almost always the men who are all slobby and dirty and have to have the woman clean up after them I mean start thinking about that when you watch TV in sitcoms they put the fathers down it's always the mother who's the smart one who comes out and does things right you know it's just something that 
we need to be more aware of. But if you read this one about perceptions on bullying, there's really a difference in how men and women perceive bullying. For men, it's usually more physical. For women, it's verbal and social because when a woman is being bullied, it quite often will come with her being ostracized from her social group or it will come from her being spoken about. They'll give her really bad insults. Well, we know that insults are not something that our president has taken down by, but there is a lot of misandry going on that is happening to men, and most men just shrug it off. But you gotta be careful about doing that, men, because the women are picking up on it, and they're starting to fall into it and believe it. Not us, not the conservative women, though. We know that when men are men, we like to be women who are women. So, but that's a whole other video there that I want to do someday on how I think the left hates women. It really does. So that is one of their things about the marketing, that they are trying to arrange how we think about society by using television, movies, print articles, everything that they can in the media to redirect how we think. The House divided, you saw that with Obama, and it clearly says Obama was very useful to them because he divided the United States by race, and then Hillary was going to come along, and she was going to divide the country by gender. So it was going to continue. It was going to be even worse under her. I mean, this whole thing, it really is worth reading. It's not very long in this video. She goes through it. It's called The Last Election, and I'll put the link to that down below. Here's the web page that she's working off of, and I'll let you see that. They give quotes on the different things from that article. It says you can download a PDF, but really it's not the same thing that you see here. So, um, like here it has the actual thing. This is like the Media Matters one. This is an internal document that was intended for their people and it's shocking. It really is what they wanted to do. See, here they are with all the different things that they wanted to have. And they had Jeb Bush planned. And he was going to run against Clinton. But, of course, he was so weak that she would win. And in the Black Swan case, that's in case somebody else won the nomination, which is what happened. OSI will work with media to ensure catastrophic negatives for whoever is counter-nominated. Well, that's happened to Trump, hasn't it? So see, the Q team has known about this. They have had access to these documents, I'm willing to bet. And they knew what these organizations were going to do. I mean, you read through this. This is a plan to destroy our country. Right here it is. Go to the links. Like I said, watch her video. She goes through it all and she gives a commentary on it. So I recommend you do that. Or go to the website here that has a lot of it and you can read through that too. So thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you later.